Hello, everyone. I hope you are having a fabulous day. Welcome to the Rachel Varga podcast. And so we kick things off with a little with a little song here. All right. So welcome, Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga. And in today's episode, we are discussing balancing our hormones and counteracting estrogen dominance in men and women and the link between gut health and the skin and my favorite sleep and skin supplements. We have an incredible guest for you here today. Super excited to have Wade Lightheart from BioOptimizers here. And we're also gonna be talking about some body, mind, spirit, energy optimization tactics for balancing our hormones that are free. So let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. We have Wade Lightheart joining us today. He is the CEO and founder of BioOptimizers. He's an athlete. He's an ordained minister. He's an author. He is definitely someone that I really want each and every one of you to follow and support. BioOptimizers is doing some pretty incredible things in the space of just, you know, making really great products. We're going to get into the weeds on the difference between white labeling products, what to look out for. And Wade Lightheart, I, I am so incredibly thrilled to have him here. And welcome to the show, Wade. How are you doing today? Rachel, it is an absolute delight to be here. It's my Friday afternoon in Venice Beach, California. The location that I dreamed of being in for 30 years, and I got here just in time for COVID. Um, but regardless of the current situation that we find ourselves in the world, it's a great opportunity to invoke and gather around with our fellow biohackers and human optimizers to get, you know, on the high vibes of life and love and all that's good and wholesome because. There's always channels of goodness streaming through if we want to tune in. And uh, I think you set a great tone with your musical introduction and, of course, your positive uh, intro. I hope I can live up to the billing. Oh, my gosh. We, we support one another. This is how this world works right now. We are, you know, needing really to switch to that send and receive mindset. And also just a reminder for every bad thing you see in the world happening, just remember that there is a positive opposite to that. So people like Wade and I, we are here on a mission to help restore that balance. And just an FYI, before we get into the content, because this is going to be a pretty heavy, heavy podcast here, we're going to get super nerdy into supplements. And you can find all of my favorite bio optimizer supplements like magnesium, the gluten guardian, which totally saved my butt, no pun intended last week, we'll talk about that. HCL, Masszymes, P3OM, Power Flush, and more at biooptimizers.com forward slash Varga10 and use the promo code Varga for 10% off. And you can also head over to rachelvarga.ca forward slash favorites where you're going to find all my favorite companies that I'm actively supporting that are here to do good work in the world. So Wade, is BioOptimizers a white label supplement company? I already yeah. know the answer to this. And yeah. what? And do you formulate with your own chemists? And what else do you do to to really create great products, which does set your pro your company apart? Yeah, it's a great question, and I think one that is going to only grow in scope and importance as we move into this new era. And uh, I'll give you a little history about it. Um, so we develop and design and test our own products just to get clear out of the gate. But let me share with you a little bit of etymology or historical aspects of how that happened. Way back in the late 1990s, long, long time ago in a galaxy far away, Wade was running a nutritional supplement store in Vancouver, Canada, as well as being a personal trainer. And I was approached by a group of business people to make a nutritional supplement. And it was in uh, something that would be good for fat metabolism. And um, they had invited me to design it. And I was really excited because I'd worked in the industry a long time and all different levels. And I was like, yeah, you know, this would be really great. I can get inside of this. And little did I know what I would discover on that journey, but it laid the foundation for by optimizers, which came along a few years later. And that was this. 
they had commissioned me to do two tiers one design the product uh, and then the second thing is get a marketing aspect and so the strategy was they would write a dummy book and you could get you remember those books you know this for dummies supplements for dummies fat burgers or computer for dummies all those dummy books well it turns out that you can hire and buy a dummy book and you write a book and they dummify it. And so we were going to do fat burners for dummies. I thought, hey, that's a great idea. And then I had to, I des- developed a, a three phase uh, metabolizer enhancer that worked by three different mechanisms. And the, the idea was by using those mechanisms, you would get, you wouldn't get acclimatization. And so then I was flown to California where I was introduced to the head of a very prestigious university that everybody would recognize the name. And I was formed during that meeting that they would assign the research studies to support what we came up to. They would, they would do some insects or something and they'd run in eight weeks and they'd sign a master. And if we paid them a hundred thousand dollars, they would prove whatever we wanted to know. And I'm dumbfounded. And then later that afternoon, we go over to, a supplement manufacturing facility, a white label facility. And uh, I met the PhD who was running it and we toured the facility and, you know, with the hair nets and the white coats and that whole thing. And um, at the end of the tour, I said, well, which one of these products would do you use? Like what, what, what things are most important to you? And he looks at me like I've got three heads and he says, well, I, I, I don't use any of these things. I'm like, you, you don't use any of these products? She's like, no, I, I don't know where they come from or what's on them or if they're contaminated and stuff. And I was like, but at the time, that company was manufacturing somewhere around just over 30% of the nutritional supplements sold in the United States at that time. The next day I was flown to uh, Nevada and my head's reeling at this point and I spent a long sleepless night in the hotel the night before and we go into the board meeting and in the board meeting of some very powerful executives in a variety of areas who want to produce a supplement, the only concern was how cheap they could get the product and how much margin they could make along with the marketing program. And it was it was a seven-figure offer on the table for me to take that. And I turned it down. And I said, I'm not going to do it. Now, keep it that time. I didn't have any money. I was just you know, a struggling personal trainer with my little nutritional shop. And my entire um, paradigm around the nutritional supplement industry was shattered in the course of that 48 hours. And I vowed at that time that one day I would make a supplement company that would actually do what it was supposed to do. And years later that happened when uh, Matt Gallant and I um, partnered together and began producing our first digestive enzyme and which was a wild and radical success. We still make that product today. It's, it's in its third version because we always look to improve. And we set a standard that we would only, we have a philosophy, it's best in class and first in class. So if we can come up with either a new product category or we can make something superior to everything that exists in a given category, which we're interested in, have expertise in, then we do it. If we can't meet those two things, we don't do it. And that's been our ethos And it was a long, slow road in the early years. Matt and I didn't pay ourselves for over a decade. Um, We just kept reinvesting money because the margins were much lower. We had to spend a lot more time on other areas. We had to be much better with our margins because we just had little room for error. But now we've become known as one of the de facto number one brands in the uh, what we call biological optimization and, and now some of the most influential people in the world in this industry are recommending and using our products, which is the most important thing. And that's really exciting. So it is worth the long journey. So you mentioned some really key things that I've been trying to train you guys here on the Rachel Varga podcast to pay attention to. What's the bottom line for the company? Are they a white label company? Are they paying a chemist for the skincare product, that same $10 over the counter product that you're gonna get on the shelf, but be marketed and pay one to 200 bucks for. The same thing goes with your supplements, this whole white label issue with skincare and supplements, a lot of people don't know about. 
And there's a lot of skincare companies out there that are just in it for the money. They're making cheap products with good margins and they don't really care about where it's sourced from, how they care for their employees, what impact they're making in the world, what's their mission. And one of the things you shared off camera with me was really cool is the intention that you have behind bio-optimizers. And trust me, I notice who you guys sponsor in the YouTube space. And I just really want to commend you guys. And I was blown away when your marketing team reached out to me. I'm like, yes, I've been so pumped to uh, hang out with you, Wade. And this is actually going to be one of my favorite interviews. I just like was so excited leading up to this one. <laughs> And that energy and the intention behind making a good product is everything. When you're looking at it that way, just wanting to help people, trust me, it shines through. So good job. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about why you are so passionate about bio-optimizers and speaking on the topic of boosting testosterone for both men and women. And a little backstory here. I got my Dutch test results back the other day. Turns out, guess what? Me of all people, I'm a little estrogen dominant, but here I am, I four by four, I play electric guitar, I do all this like super male dominant stuff. A couple of years ago, I tested myself and I was actually testosterone dominant. That was about four years ago. And now I'm estrogen dominant. Give us some tips for, you know, boosting our testosterone because estrogen dominance is a bit of like an epidemic, if I will say so. Well, we, we in the last 80 years have initiated in maybe the most unintended hormonal disruption um, experiment. And I think it wasn't even an experiment, it had just happened. And so if you go back to, let's just talk about the soldiers who were storming the beaches of Normandy. My when, grandfather was one of them, the Regina Rifles. He was one of the, the key um, you know, regiments that actually took it. Isn't that cool? And took heavy losses, which traumatized many of those people for a lifetime. And the freedoms that we enjoy today are built on not just the intentions of those in individuals, but the hormonal wherewithal. Did you know that it's estimated that the average testosterone level of the soldiers who were deployed at that time was 2,500? Today, if you have testosterone levels in the six to 800 range, that's considered excellent, a thousand being the top end. And most men are below 200. And that's emerging even younger and younger. And you go, well, how did this happen over the course of 80 years? And I'm going to talk to men first, but I'm, it's also related to women. And of course, I'm, I'm a male, so it's an issue that we've identified specifically from our side, but then it, with my female audience and clients, we got to learn the other side of it as well. So 80 years ago, we after World War II, we departed um, from traditional farming um, and manufacturing and distribution of our food chains. You know, the, the world opened up, television opened up, advertising opened up, um, fast foods, the yuppie lifestyle, the commercial upwardly mobile industry, people were making more money, people were living in houses, they were moving out to the burbs, they're traveling, the latchkey kids emerge, all that stuff that happened. We were going to space, all this craziness, huge right. advancement in human evolution. Right. And what happened, what we didn't understand is in order to meet the, the, the demands of the baby boom, all the governments were started to realize, uh oh, we don't have enough food by our normal production. So tremendous amounts of resources were poured into regulation, ensuring that staple foods were produced. And then because of the transportation and centralization of this, we started to add elements to the foods and add elements to the farming, which ended up having unintended consequences. So in the short term, hey, we could increase the yield, we could kill off bugs, we could turn around the growth times, we could preserve the food for a longer period of time. We could ship them, package them, distribute them and get people. And then the calorie models came out. And of course, the food pyramids and all these things that happened. Well, the long and short of it is the chemicals that we added to the food, particularly herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, um, you know, all interesting rhyme with like suicide and homicide. That's kind of interesting. But these agents ended up being hormone dysregulators. Then the advent of plastics, which is a massive estrogenization of society. And there's a great 
a documentary um, that was produced by the Canadian government in conjunction with the Canadian government, which was called The Disappearing Male. And the, the rapid production of estrogen throughout the world through plastics and chemicalization and all these chemical agents they add to our cosmetics and our hair, uh, uh, it's our, like our hair gels. And I just did a consultation with a woman right before this from Florida. And I went through the ingredients of one of her products that is like a very common product on the market. There was freaking BPA added. I was just looking at the industrial, or the, and, uh, there we go, there's a slip. I was looking at the ingredient list and honestly, I just think there's a lot of industrial byproducts in this particular, I, I was like blown away. It's like, how is this even on the market? And anything that goes on your skin, uh, if you can't eat it, it's permeating into every cell in your body. And if you do biopsies on people, what do you find inside of these biopsies? When you take fat cells out, you find herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, dyes, preservatives, and petrochemical and estrogen producing agents which all cascade down into our hormone processes and causing excessive amounts of dysregulation. And for what happens is you get sometimes massive estrogenization of men. And what's interesting is a hyper estrogenation of women can cause a giant spike in testosterone levels as the body starts to acquire it. So Women are becoming more manly and ma men are becoming more womanly. And well, I, I can't help but just like postulate that this is actually done intentionally. Well, there's that's, that's deep. That's really deep. What I just said, sorry. I just said, yeah, it, it's the, the, the thing is, is whether it's done intentionally or not, and I have my own personal opinions, but that is irrelevant. The evidence is certainly clear that this is happening on mass that for, for example i have a large number of friends who are young male internet entrepreneurs who spend tremendous amounts of time staring into blue screens which cause a cortisol response and 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 which cause a, a, a massive smash down in uh, testosterone levels for men these guys are in their late 20s early 30s and they're all on testosterone replacement when they should be in the prime of their lives. And they're not. Uh, we also see all sorts of um, hormonal dysregulation for women, either over estrogenization or dysregulation, which is causing thyroid impact, which is a very strong precursor. And then some of the precursor hormones. And of course, uh, which led into our research around enzymes and probiotics and the interaction between this and the extraction of nutrients out of the food and hormone regulation and stuff. And what was interesting with Dr. Howell, the great enzyme researcher who predicted in the 40s and 50s that in three generations, the human species would go through what happened in all his testing animals. By third generation, they had weird genetic diseases, strange sociological behavior that were not natural to that species and the inability to procreate. And that's exactly where we are today as humans. And he was able to see this and was condemned uh, extensively uh, in the literature. And even today, uh, it's not uncommon for uh, researchers to condemn Dr. Howell's work, yet there's certainly evidence of his predictions to the T uh, all around us. And one has to recognize that no matter how smart a person is, they only know what they've been taught. And if the institutions of the dissemination of the information that they've taught, either by omission or commission, do not identify key aspects that are missing keys, then you have an incomplete body of knowledge. And when I talked to one of my close friends, who's a Harvard surgeon, um, he put the first stent in the body. He's 80 years old. He's a wonderful man. Love him dearly. And I was talking to him about what's happened in our institutions of higher learning, which set the tone for virtually every field. He says, oh, it's all started to change in the 80s. Because in the 80s, he says, for example, in general surgery, he says, to become a vascular surgeon, which he is, you had to be first a general surgeon. And everybody goes through general surgery and then specializes. He goes, so I love, he says, I love getting the calls at midnight, two o'clock in the morning, gunshot wound, car accident, knife wound, whatever. Because he goes, I know I go in and that's that person's last hope. 
I open them up, I take the damaging issues, I sew them back up, the body heals itself. Because I don't heal anybody. I just watch it happen. He goes, but what happened is because people got into specialization because of legals, economics, uh, the scope and growth of the, the world, they didn't want to do all of these general type surgeries, which they were trained for. And so the hyper specialization meant that they only did this kind of surgery. And that's proliferated in virtually all careers that you have highly trained, specialized people in very small niches of this machine of humanity and very little general knowledge and, and a movement away from critical thinking. So if you look back to the founding fathers of the United States, for example, well, in their late 20s, they wrote the American Constitution. They were, they were astrologers. They were writers. They were philosophers. They were legal, uh, you know, legal professionals, financiers, bankers, inventors. Um, all of them could read and write at levels far in excess of almost anyone in today's standards, you know, regardless of institutional uh, teachings and you have to go, well, wait a minute. Um, and not only that, they were farmers. They had to grow their own food. They had to raise their own um, cattle and livestock. And, you know, they were tuned in with the seasons. They had to be certain uh, amateur almanac. They were polymaths. And polymaths today, according to um, Brett and Eric Weinstein, two of the foremost educational thinkers in our thing, are, are talking about how you are not taken seriously in the educational institutions if you are looking through correlative thinking across different fields. Even though Elon Musk, one of the most successful inventor entrepreneurs of the day, suggested that by learning uh, about different fields, you can extrapolate principles out of one field and apply it into other for rapid integration and development. And so, we need to start looking at those models of success as opposed to this hyper specialization. And so what happens, you go in to a test. I'm going to tie this all back into the hormone thing. You go in and you get a test and it goes, oh, my God, my estrogen's out of control or my testosterone's in the toilet or my thyroid is in. And they go, well, don't worry, Mr. or Mrs. Jones. We have a pill that will address this hormone. We'll just give you this pill and we'll monitor it. And it goes up and then, okay, your thyroid goes up, which helps balance your hormones. Okay. And then, or we give you an anti-estrogen or we give you a testosterone pe pellet or shot or whatever. And then you start that. And then, then the body acclimatizes and starts to re-regulate another way. And now you're, you're, you're chasing this game. And before you know it, you're 17 pills deep. You look like crap. You feel like crap. There's no hope in sight. You've seen 27 different specialists. You're pulling your hair out and you're listening on a podcast wondering which diet you should follow because the gurus of each industry are spending their time fighting each other instead of addressing first cause principles. And so it's our responsibility at Bioptimizers to help bridge the gap between the variance in the different dietary strategies, the different uh, health optimization strategies to say, hey, look, here's a way that you can approach this. We've had all these challenges. We've dealt with tens of thousands of clients that have done this. And we found a way to el elucidate and deliver a sequential way of addressing your health issues with time, energy, money, and focus in order of importance. And from that, uh, it gives you a, a working start. Oh my gosh, I could just listen to you talk forever. You have such a wonderful working knowledge. And you know what? We see this in the intelligence and also the big P world. Y'all know what I'm saying. I got to talk in code sometimes that things are hyper compartmentalized. And I just had Dr. Serge on here and he's like published over 20 times and he was working on a project and knew where the funding was coming from, didn't like it left because he wanted to sleep well at night. And I just really encourage people making those decisions right now to do what feels good for them, not just what the paycheck is, right? Like really be hyper-focused who we're supporting emotionally and economically with your products and supplements and all of that. So share with us some of the factors that are lowering our testosterone for both men and women, and some of your favorite ways to balance this for free 
with lifestyle and some of your other resources that you share and teach on? First thing first, get rid of all the, the chemicals that you cannot pronounce out of your life. Your shampoos, your soaps, your cleaners, um, the, uh, the clothing, the agents that where you could get transference of any of these, um, these estrogenizing chemicals, most of them are lean towards that side of the, 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 the spectrum. Get them out of your life, throw them out, just get them out of your house, get them out of your life and be, and start to go natural organic. If you cannot eat it, it does not go on your skin. It does not go on your hair. It's that simple because otherwise it's being absorbed by your skin tissue. The second thing is start managing your blue light and your sleep times. And what that means is, is we are spending an incredible amount of time in front of uh, phones, televisions, screens, all of this. And it's extremely disruptive for our hormone cycles. And now, um, you know, guys like Dr. Jack Cruz, who is a, you know, a neurosurgeon who, you know, he's, he's obviously a controversial fellow, but he's, he's kind of led the way in addressing the impact of light and our mitochondria. Uh, Dave Asprey is also someone who talks extensively about it, as does uh, pretty much all the leading industry experts. And most of them have a sleep regulation cycle that they adhere to because they've almost all had hormonal dysregulation because they have too much blue light, too much distraction, and a disrupted circadian rhythm, which every biological organism runs by. That's why we live in a solar system. So that's step one. That's step two. Number three, um, you want to get your hormones tested as early as possible and do so on a, on a regular basis, either, you know, annually or biannually at the most. Why do you want to do that? Even if it's regular? Well, what you want to see is a track record, um, that you can establish for you. And when there are variances within your lifestyle, stress level, chemical exposure, moving to a new building, you know, cause sometimes like things like molds or microtoxins can impact you. Um, you know, there's a, a variety of different things re related to your environment that you may not be aware of, but if you've established, Hey, everything's going along and then suddenly everything changes, you're now able to take apart that six months that year and say, what did I do different? That was different over and above. Was there a collective thing? Um, you can also look at uh, getting something like a Great Plains toxicity map. Um, some people like hair analysis, live blood cell analysis, all these different things to see what environmental toxins am I being exposed to regularly? Am I near a farm? Am I exposed to fertilizers or chemical agents that I may not be aware of? Uh, are they spraying inside my building for different pests or in my local area that you might not be aware of? What is the policy about uh, chemical agents in the water tables. So, so that's important. The next thing I would suggest is getting extremely focused about the filtration of the fluids that's going on your body, particularly what's coming through on your bathtub, your shower, and what you're consuming for water. Get rid of, stop consuming water out of plastic bottles, period. It's bad for the environment. It's toxic for your health. It's highly estrogenizing. It makes no sense. It costs a lot of money. And if you just put really high end filtration system and you can as crazy as you want to go on filtration for water in your life, it's probably not enough. You can always do better. So I have pre-filters coming into my house. I have a very uh, extreme water filtration system. I have uh, water filtrations on the, uh, I use ionizers, filters, restructuring devices, you name it is all coming in on my water. Why? Well, we're mostly bags of water. And so well, that's that's what I say too. We're just bags of water, right? So I'm a fan of structuring too. I love you that you brought that up. And water has four stages, a solid, a liquid, a gas, and a crystal. 
And a lot of people don't know that. And the crystal is an elaborate part of the communication system that allows us to transfer and store information. Water has 440,000 information panels. It has electrical charge. It has, uh, you know, memory. It has a osmotic pressure. It is a solvent that carries uh, chemicals, either positive or negative. It also drives nutritional supplementation. It increases the anabolic response, DNA transcription, and almost every single person that you'll test in a clinical setting, which I did for many years in Vancouver, will come in chronically dehydrated because the water they're drinking has a high osmotic pressure, oftentimes due to the plastic leached into it, they can't absorb it. So if you just took out the chemicals, you put a sleep strategy to manage your blue light. You put really good filtration system in here. And then I would say is making sure that you get a high level uh, essential fatty acid for hormone uh, formation and do your hormone testing, removing chemical agents from their body. 80% of your issues around hormones will probably regulate in a very short period of time. The other 20%, is going to come down to three factors, genetics, epigenetics, and the lifestyle factors that trigger those. And so this is where you want to get into uh, a genetic and epigenetic research specialist to break down what's going on in your body and determine what is the right action for you and your life, because it might be different than your spouse, your kids, your parents, or your friends. So for example, Matt, my business partner, is a keto guy and I'm a plant-based guy. And we make a company that produces supplements for both of those dietary choices. Why? Because the dietary choices are right for our individuality, not right for me to get into dietary tribal war with someone else about what they need to do or what they shouldn't do or why my way is better than theirs. That's not the case. The best diet for you is the one that's selected based on those parameters and that will end that discussion permanently. I echo everything you said and I was taking some notes here. All right. So let's, when you said don't use anything you can't pronounce, I do have a background in gen chem, organic chem, biochem. So that doesn't necessarily apply to me. So you can probably, you can probably pronounce words that are way outside my range. I have fun with it sometimes. So key ingredients that I want you guys to look at the back of the products right now. Grab your skincare product. If it's got parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, test it on animals, don't use it. Um, the one product I saw today, I could not believe that BPA was actually an ingredient. And this is from like a, probably the most popular skin and beauty and fragrance store, black and white labeling kind of deal. And it's their like flagship brand product. I was just blown away. I've never seen so many ingredients on a product. And you know who's using it for the most part? Young women. Young yeah. women are using this. Menopausal women are using this. Women around conception time. So what I'm doing, and, and I'm going to lead into testing. Yes. The reason I did a Dutch test recently, because I'm giving myself a year preconception window. My fertility expert friends are like, three to six months, I'm doing a freaking year and I'm taking y'all along right. So I had low melatonin. So I do a lot of blue light. I do a lot of red light therapy as well, but too much blue light before bedtime. I completely echo even myself. I try and be careful about it, but I'm not perfect. Um, the Dutch test is really helping me. And if you're interested in other test kits, like epigenetic gut test kits, I do have some of my favorite resources at rachelvarga.ca on the favorites tab. You can see there, you'll also see bio-optimizers there and love talking about water filtration. We have re reverse osmosis in the home. I have a device behind me that structures my water and also wear a necklace, the arc pendant. Uh, it's not paid to promote them or anything, but these are just things that can help you. But structure Structured water is going to be the most uh, like it's it's free flowing water that you're going to find in nature, but it's totally distorted uh, with us now, which is really, really too bad. So great, great tidbits there. So it, because you work with so many people and you have for such a long time, which groups of people do you find are accessing and raving about bio optimizers? Are they like the biohackers, the athletes, the entrepreneurs, mom and, moms and dads? Yeah, great question. So we started out originally addressing the high performance athletic world, particularly around uh, aesthetics, 
muscle building, body fat reduction. And I believe that the bodybuilding community was or the original OG biohackers. Or, or we, we, were, we were way ahead of the game a long time ago. We called it bodybuilding. Um, from that, in those extreme aspects, we were able to start applying these to people in the regular world. So at a holistic health clinic in Vancouver, Canada, and we'd start running all kinds of tests on, usually it started out with people who had compromised states of health, particularly people with digestive issues, cognitive challenges, or neurological issues. And turned out that when you started cleaning up their guts, a lot of these problems went away, which was interesting. Same thing with and, the skin and the aging process. Why do you think I'm talking about this on the show here? It's key. Yeah. yeah. And then what started to happen is there started to be carryover. And so now our clientele falls into multiple different bucket, buckets. The biohacker community, we are not a secret. They're, we're probably one of the better known brands in the entire industry now. Virtually everybody comes to us for digestive health products. And now um, with our magnesium product i think we've got probably the most robust magnesium product on the market and then recently our entrance into um, customized neurological optimization nootropics with i can't wait for mine i did my questionnaire and they're coming to me i am so excited about this you, you, it's it's going to be even crazier when you want it the uh, the nootropic offerings that we've been able to provide we've solved the problem with individual brain chemistry because there's a variance in any and so we actually offer customized solutions for people's brains directly to address both um depletion due to uh, dominance and deficiency relative to nutrition or inability to produce that. Okay. So, you know, you, you're dealing with dominance, depletion, and deficiency. So whatever you're dominant, you can usually deplete easily, or you're dominant in something because you don't have the vast array. So we fill that up. So we've been addressing all those issues. So the biohackers love us. And now I'm getting like everybody from, you know, medical doctors, um, particularly functional medicine doctors are really into us in a, in a big way, as well as uh, chiropractors, nutritionists, and usually people from a little bit more affluent side, to be frank, you know, our, our products are premium level products and it costs us a lot of money to make it. We have very small margins on that, but we believe in repeat business. And so, um, we're hoping as we build out uh, more of our, our our capability to grow that we'll be able to drive pricing down to get it even to more people. But yeah, we're on the premium side for sure. Well, I mean, you pay for what you get. You can go on Amazon or eBay and get those fake supplements, but who knows what the heck you're taking. It's a lot cheaper. The packaging looks the same, just like that Louis Vuitton handbag, but it's, it's a fake and you don't know who you're supporting. So stop buying your freaking products from Amazon, eBay, these shady third party auction websites that you feel like you might be getting a, a potential virus on as well and just stick with us and but also i love what you're talking about it's like you you do have to test for this stuff and i've been preaching this for a very long time test and don't guess i will say my personal experience with taking bio optimizers uh i had a serious gut issue last thursday i ate something wrong for me and I couldn't believe it. I literally felt like I was the walking dead. I was completely zonked out. Like I couldn't do anything that day. It was crazy. So I took uh, some of my digestive enzymes. I All I did was, was like basically a liquid diet that day of the protein, the gut guardian, um, some of the gut health powder. I stuck that in there. And I did actually notice like pretty quick, I started feeling better. And I, I actually did, it inspired me to talk about something. Instead of taking a sick day, take a recovery day. So I took all my supplements. I did some brain training and I rested and I recharged and I rejuvenated. So flip the script. If you're not feeling well, turn it into a recovery day. Give your body the grace that it needs sometimes to just stop and try not to push through it. Okay. So in your opinion, having worked with the top minds in the uh, aging and optimization sp space, you are working with the best of the best, which is why I was so thrilled when, when you guys reached out to me, I was like, ah, yes, finally. Uh, what is the future of aging, longevity, biohacking, and aesthetics? Well, I have a concept I call the biospan, and it comprises of your, the kind of like the peak of your health 
how long you can main it, maintain it, as well as its inevitable declination over time. So we have a lifespan, we have a health span, and in between, I call it the biospan. I'm not so sure if we actually can extend people past their karmic uh, designation in their lifespan. I'm pretty confident that we can increase the quality of their life uh, through lifestyle intervention because we know that the inverse is true. And what I mean by that, in, in, in the, during the Bush administration, there was a, a paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine by Pre Professor Oshansky about life expectancy in the United States. And it caused an uproar. Um, and he was censored in that paper and what he could say. And what it was is that he said for the first time in history, the uh, lifespan uh, for the kids of the current generation was going to be less overall from a, from a general per practice than it had been for any age. And it had been steadily going up through the entire history of the United States and concurrently with Canada since its inception. Well, why was that? And he also said that the disability adjusted lifespan had dropped to 60 years old, meaning that it was predicted that the average person in the United States would be subjected to living a compromised living dependent on a variety of different pharmaceutical interventions that would definitively mess up the quality of life. So they were living to be 80, which was a great growth, but the 20, the last 20 years were not that pleasant descending into chaos. And so what I looked at is like, okay, well, let's say that the, the, the pinnacle of what we have in reported health, uh, long-term health is 120 years as a human, but most people don't make it past the eighties. Well, why is that? Well, because of everything that we're doing beforehand cuts our lifespan and our health span. So what if we can do and in incorporate technology, practices, and procedure that cranks the health of that individual to the highest level possible as soon as possible, then we, we're going to extend the top of the curve of that span and the decline should be much less than it normally would over the lifespan. So maybe you only live to be 100, 105, but you're out dancing during those last few years. And I had the good fortune of living on a little block in a place called Hillsboro, New Brunswick, when I was a kid. And four of my neighbors were all made centurions. One of them today, she's 103 years old. And my mom visits her regularly. Uh, there was another fella who was 106 that I was um, met as a young boy in my church when I was six or seven years old. And I was fascinated. And then I had two other centurions that lived literally on opposite sides of my street. And so I was subjected to the, the possibility of living long and strong. And these people live vibrant, healthy lives. They were out farming. They were out. They had social structure. And so now I believe that through technology, we are going to be able to live healthily to 100 and beyond. And that's our mission at Bioptimizers. Love it. Yeah, grandparents on both my sides, they lived well into their mid 90s. And so I do want to talk about this because my my grandfather fought on the beach of Normandy and survived. And the whole concept of generational genetic changes and influences you can, i mean from the in the esoteric lens this is you know ancestral trauma at its finest as well in like the physical form but i just want to point something out here so when we're talking about like supplements and we're talking about skincare products rejuvenation lasers injectables new latest antioxidant and um, enzyme peptides there's one thing we cannot do. We cannot test and experiment on pregnant and breastfeeding women because of this. So if you are pregnant and breastfeeding, you need to take the best care possible of your temple. If you're someone like myself who is considering having children, both if you're a man or woman, you need to pay attention to this stuff because the, the decisions that I make are going to impact 
the generations down the line. And we want to be able to maintain our genes as best as we can as they were created to do so. So that was a little bit of a rant there. But, but you know, that's why we can't use like or recommend things like retinols and, um, you know, different things on the skin, benzoyl peroxide for somebody who's pregnant breastfeeding. That's, that's, that's one of the reasons why we just are unable to do testing on it to see if it's safe and effective because it's actually unethical to test on pregnant breastfeeding women. Read between the lines, guys. So what are your top tips for maintaining a balanced body, mind, spirit, and energy? You know, and this is going to go against the grain of what a lot of biohackers says, but I believe that resistance training is the most superior form in regards to longevity, health production, and maintaining aesthetics and uh, metabolic flexibility. So even strength training three times a week. Number one, ladies, you will not get too big. Okay, this is not going to happen. But if you want to have a shapely, curvy body, it's directly correlated to muscle mass. Muscle mass is also one of the best predictors of a bone density, as well as longevity. So not only do you look better, you lose muscle slower over time. And that has profound uh, longevity and aesthetics component. And I think if you feel good and look good, it, it provides a positive self image, at least to a certain extent. Now, on top of that, I believe that uh, cultivating a personal connection with spirit is really critical. One of the great losses, and I'm a spiritual aspirant and a bit of a philosopher, and some people would say a woo-woo wingnut at times, but um, going back historically, there's a famous saying that happened uh, in the late 1800s uh, coined by uh, the great Frederick Nietzsche. And it was God is dead. And it was taken as something that was a proclamation that there's no point in having God. But actually, Nietzsche thought that that was going to have devastating consequences to humanity and that there would be massive amounts of violence as we move to nihilism. And sure enough, he predicted there would be great wars in the world. And that's what happened. If we look at the movement away from having the community focused spiritual connection where people gathered together and went to institutions such as classical based religions that kind of got thrown out um, as we went into this kind of yuppie world in the 1970s there started to be a separation um, the pursuit of truth and science is based on the pursuit of tr original truth from spirituality and when, when the church became corrupted in the Middle Ages, people that laid the foundations for integrous people to pursue science. And most of the great scientists see the fusion between science and spirit. They're not independent of each other. And so when one has an inner practice that cultivates awareness of the subtle energies that exist within us, you know, for, I'll give you a quick exercise to prove my point. I think Wade's getting a little wooey here. What's going on here? Well, let's just take a quick experiment. If I was to cut off your arm, are you still you? Well, yes. Right? If I cut off your other arm, are you still you? You're cut off your legs. At what point are you still you? Well, you always are still you. So it's quick to, we have to recognize in its self-image that I'm not my body. Fair to say, because who, what is the I? So I can experience it. It's a meat suit. It's a meat right. suit. Okay. So then go, wait a second. We're having this conversation and maybe the listener is saying, well, what's that guy talking about? Or you have feelings or thoughts about what's being transpired here. Well, if you are observing either your thoughts or your feelings, well, that means that you can't be those either because just like your arm, you're experiencing them as an extension of what you call you. So I know what I'm feeling. I know what I'm thinking. I know what my body looks like, or and then I have an association with it. And that might be representative of a conditioning program that I feel good about myself or bad about myself. But all those things are recognized is that there is an innate and ob observer of both our physicality, our emotional world, 
and our mental world. Well, who is that? Okay. Who is the eye behind? Who is the ghost behind the machine? And what I believe is that observational point is the connection point between all that is, the universal aspect, the indivisible, unattainable uh, aspect of divinity, which is allocated to experience through a variety of different methodologies based on time, place, social customs, environment, languaging, and values of a culture that emerged over sometimes thousands of years. The active pursuit of inner spiritual work through contemplation, meditation, spiritual study, opening one's heart, and cultivating rational, clear thinking and the application of intelligence leads to a path of equanimity. And equanimity means being able to address the challenge of existence as they come up all the way to the experience, which most people want to avert, which is the idea of non-existence, which is the foundational fear behind every single fear that people are existing. And so without cultivating a practice of a relationship with spirit, you are now easily manipulated by external sources because your fear of the inevitable and you do not want to address it. So to me, spiritual pursuit in a practice on a daily basis is the all, only bulwark against the uncertainty of existence and the tragedy of it and if you get that, then it's not the tragedy of existence, it is the joy of, and that is the difference in how I believe that you acquire a balanced life. One of the other things that I would just love to add to this is that I really believe that when we're hearing in the Bible, the golden age, you know, all of that, I feel like heaven really is in our heart and in our minds, whatever like physical you want to put on that. We can make the decision to live a happy life, a joyful life. And when we meet with vibrant, radiant humans, which is actually really who I love to study. And over 10 and a half years of working with clients in rejuvenation, you start to notice who these individuals are. And it's a pretty good idea to take some notes out of their playbook. So listening to you for tips for maintaining the a balanced body, mind, spirit, energy, it's going to look different for everybody based on your lineage, your practices, your values, your programmings. I mean, the list goes on. But don't let anybody gaslight you into making you feel like you're crazy for thinking something if it really does feel good for you. And you don't have to explain yourself. But I recommend that you really create your community. So, you know, hanging out with you here, Wade, and sharing our communities together, it's just going to help us become that much stronger so we can support each other when it matters most. And you've actually inspired me to get ordained, actually. I'm not even going to lie. My great-grandmother was one of the first female ordained ministers in Canada. That is my lineage. And I'm really, um, really wanting to share with you all here to really boost your protection practices and to really notice how you may be interfered with, both galactically, celestially, technologically, and just notice if something doesn't resonate with you and listen to that. So I did a two day social media fast. I came back online. I'm like, holy shoot, all these people's like generational traumas and values and perspectives are getting like shoved in my face. And I didn't like that. So sometimes we do need to just take some time to ourself, meditate, do the, the inner work. And it's really important. And so for doing that inner work, we need our body, mind, and spirit to be functioning in its highest level possible. So last question. This is actually really important. It's a little bit woo. You might not have realized this. But when our gut is working better, our mind will work better as well. And also when we're not in the fear state, our prefrontal cortex will get the blood supply it leads so that we can make logical decisions and not emotional decisions. 
how do you view and like to opt? How do you like to optimize the gut brain connection? Why is this important? And what also one of the passion projects behind bio optimizers with us? Great questions. So if there was one thing that I would advise or initiate people to consider is that who are you feeding? So there's an old saying that you are what you eat. And I would, my research has determined that that's not exactly true. It's you are what you digest, absorb, and utilize as well as what you can't digest, absorb, and utilize. The latter being a toxic substance and the former being that which sustains the physiological components. Now, in order to do that, there are five distinct stages of digestion, the taste, touch, uh, develop food, the mastication of the food, the travel of the food to the upper cardiac portion of the stuffing, the breaking down of the food through enzymes and hydrochloric acid, and then the depositing of that food to the microbiome. And then the exiting of that food through peristaltic contraction, which is the waste. Now, the relationship with this microbiome, there's anywhere from 200 to 500 strains of bacteria in the average person. And they're now studying tribes that haven't had exposed to civilized, exposure to civilizations. And they have hundreds of different strains that we don't even possess anymore in the modern world. The symbiotic relationship between these organisms determines whether you can produce a wide variety of neurochemicals in your body. And some of the bad or the uh, inflammatory bacteria, or the sometimes called the bad bacteria, they can produce a variety of toxins that can impact your cognitive capabilities. And so the evidence is now clear. And then um, concordantly to that, we have what's uh, uh, Harvard has just released a research paper suggesting that virtually everyone in North America has uh, some variants of leaky gut syndrome. Um, and leaky gut is the permutation of uh, when food, undigested food, leaches into the system and causes an autoimmune response to the body because when you have undigested proteins in the blood, there's an inflammatory response. Your nervous system or your uh, immune system attacks it, right? And there's an inflammatory response and this is in a perpetual state. So if you're feeling, uh, if you get headaches a lot, you get bloated, blotchy skin, uh, you have either constipation or you get diarrhea regularly. You have certain foods that you can't eat. You have a hyper amount of allergies. You get inflamed easy. You have arth any itis pains. All of those are ind indicative that you are not fully digesting what is going inside your body and turning it into either building blocks or energy units. That's all digestion is for. And particularly in the cognitive area, there is a variety of bacteria cultures, which are 100% responsible for, for producing key neurochemicals inside your brain. And the reason you crave going to 7-Eleven at two o'clock in the morning when you know that you shouldn't, and the reason that you can maintain a diet for an extended period of time are directly related to how you are feeding the bacteria and if those bacteria exist and the good ones are growing and the bad ones are being killed off. And so we developed a, a suite of digestive products, starting with the enzyme side, hydrochloric acid, and then uh, what we call compatible strains of bacteria that work synergistically with your diet and with each other. So putting random, uh, you know, what I call a mishmash of maybes in a bottle is not food science or health science or biotech science. We have a lab. Uh, we have actually a lab in uh, university, uh, Birch University, that we have a partnership with. And so we have PhDs in microbiome. Uh, we have docking agent specialists. We have uh, programmers in artificial intelligence and genetics who are all working concordance and neurochemist. Uh, who are working in conjunction to determine what we can put on for hermetic stresses on both the bacteria inside our bodies, what gets across, what doesn't, what causes leaky gut, what fixes leaky gut, which families of bacteria work together, which ones produce the neurochemicals, which ones don't, which ones are bad, how can we kill off the bad guys, all that stuff. 
And so all of our products have been developed specifically with evidence-based research to show that they actually work and what they're for. And we provide the education for people in order so that they can pick the right product for them, their diet and what they're going through. And we also give a free, we, we, if, if it doesn't work for someone, we just give them their money back. So what we believe is that we're using our extensive scientific literature over, you know, we've been started, we started this in 2004. So we're going on 17 years of research that Matt and I have been working on this, both in a clinical level, dealing with clients all over the world, and then now in a more professional setting with the, with the appropriate intelligent group to develop the most potent probiotic and effective strains out there, as well as all of the digestive aids. We've got products that will fix your leaky gut. We've got products that will wipe out bad bacteria. We've got products that will help boost up the neurochemical production in your body. And those aren't just claims. We back them up with our money back guarantee and with our research lab. And we'll be releasing probably in the coming year an extensive amount of educational material that we are having unbelievable breakthroughs in this area. And it's so pertinent because our digestive systems are so compromised today. So you mentioned a Harvard study on leaky gut, correct? Yeah. When was that published? I think it was like six months ago or something like that. Amazing. I have a family member who is a Harvard trained physician oversees like tons of clinics. And uh, I had a pretty heated discussion with him a couple of years ago. And he just does not believe in the leaky gut thing. I was trying to explain it to him. And he's just like, no, I think that's garbage. Well, I need to be emailing him that study. So. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I believe it's in one of our um, recent uh, education information. So reach out to our team and we can kind of give you the research or look on our channel. And it's, it's a huge, totally a huge thing because it is a breakthrough research mm -hmm. demonstrating what people are experiencing yeah. around the world. And guys like um, Stephen Gundry, uh, the Yale physician and cardiologist has, has demonstrated the inflammatory components of various foods and its problems that's backing up. Dr. Jacoby inflammatory agents around diabetes and all these, uh, itises, including, um, you know, brain dysregulation issues that our seniors are suffering from all related to undigested food. So this is really crazy because you also mentioned pain. So I'm dealing with like some car crash stuff, concussion, had some pain in my hands. And I like to play my guitar, as you guys know. I've been playing since I was 10 years old, rocking out on Gibson Les Paul Classic over here, my acoustic electric Yamaha. I love my, my guitars. I need to use my hands. And I noticed that I've actually been using bio-optimizers for now about two weeks and some other really cool adaptogens for adrenal support, really focusing on my health and wellness right now with Dutch test. My hand doesn't hurt anymore. And I actually noticed that during the call because I was getting pain into my hands here. And I was like, ah, oh, is it like from mold? What is it from? And I feel great. I also feel like since, you know, really having your protein pretty well almost every day and the magnesium before bed and some other adaptogens, my brain is like, holy moly. I wrote like 3000 words the other day in two hours. A couple of weeks before that, I was trying to write an abstract for one of my recent academic papers because I published. It took me like all day to write an abstract, which is like a paragraph. So this stuff can be powerful if you're a working professional, entrepreneur, or, you know, if you're just like regular, uh, you know, mom, dad, home, just trying to do the best to look after yourself, regular people like you and I, this can be really helpful for us to live our best lives. So you can find all of my favorite bio-optimizer supplements over at biooptimizers.com forward slash Rachel 10. I got the VIP kit. Thank you so much for sending this over to me. And I'm just absolutely thrilled to continue to partner with an amazing kickbutt company like your company Wade Lightheart at biooptimizers.com and check out the show notes for some discounts, some links and all that. And just FYI, what we covered here was not medical advice. It was educational purposes only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of your licensed physician. And just a tip, if you can find a physician that has an understanding of functional medicine as well and knows what a Dutch test is, that's when you know you have a really great healing rock star in your pocket. So Wade, do you have any closing words for us today? I sure do. And that is, um, you can't supplement your way out of, bad, of a bad diet. And 
one of the things that we do and we give away at Bioptimizers is a course called the Awesome Health Course. I developed it. It's based on 30 years of my own journey in research where I put together uh, five to 15 minute videos uh, for 12 weeks. There's 84 of them. You can mix and match or go through the whole course, which will lay down a strategic foundation that will allow you, your family, anyone that you know, to be able to know where to put the first principles. We don't get to supplements to, to five levels down. We deal with air and water and exercise. Supplement. All these questions that we are often chasing our tail and don't have time to find. I put it in there to give that away to people that way they can apply these first principles. And then when they add the right supplement to the dietary choices that make sense for them, it works and is way more effective than to randomly shotgun something. So I hope people will download and try that. You can check out our book uh, from sick to superhuman blueprint for biological optimization. We have a free download on that. And of course, reach out to us. Uh, we love hearing your stories, your questions. I personally answer all of the questions that come into Bioptimizers. We have a repertoire, uh, repository of over 8,000 answers. And each week my team brings them to me. If we haven't answered it before, I go in and answer it. Uh, I really want to help. And if I can't answer it, I will direct you to the appropriate professional that may be able to provide insight. That's our service to you. I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Wade. It's just been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. I look forward to hanging out on your podcast, the Awesome Health Podcast. Tell everybody what awesome stands for, why you named your show that way. Yeah, so it is an acronym that I apply to my health philosophy, which stands for the um, what I call the strategic pillars that allow you to experience like, truly awesome health. Air, water, exercise, all of which are non-negotiable. Sunlight, which is relative to your diet. Optimizers, which include enzymes, probiotics, essential minerals, essential vitamins, essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, and herbs, and then mental beliefs and attitude, as well as education, testing, and coaching. These parameters will allow you to experience a truly robust level of health and have confidence of evaluating any technology, any diet, or any supplement for the rest of your life. And that's why I give it away for free amazing oh my gosh i love what you guys do so thank you so much wade and your whole team at bio optimizers keep fighting the good fight you have my support i'm going to ruthlessly support companies like yours emotionally and economically that are here to help us be better humans body mind spirit energy this is how we get ish done in this day and age have a great day, everybody. Be sure to subscribe here to the Rachel Varga podcast. Subscribe on the Rachel Varga YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that you know a new episodes are dropped and you can hang out with me at rachelvarga.ca. And yes, I answer all my own emails as well. All right. Have a great one. And thanks again, Wade, for joining us here today. Thanks so much.